And now I'm joined again by Nate Madden of CRTV's Capitol Hill Brief. Uh, Nate Madden has just recently uh, given birth or helped his wife give birth to a child who joins us as well. Lucy, is that right? Yes, Lucia Annette. So sister after sister Lucia Fatima and uh, Venerable Anne de Guigny. Uh Venerable Anne, I highly advise you look up. She's uh, kind of like a hipster Saint Teresa Blazou, just a holy little French girl. Yeah. Very but, good. Well, thank you for taking the time out of your paternity break to, to come on our show and, and, uh, and talk things over with me. Thank you. Appreciate it. So what are we chatting about? Well, what happened, of course, over the weekend was there was this Unite the Right march, which is sort of like last year's Charlottesville, or it was a week, year before, I forget, Charlottesville march. It's even smaller showing. Um, the media, of course, mainstream media, loves this stuff, as does, actually, we've recently discovered Russia, which likes stirring up this kind of division. Um, but what what's interesting here is that I think that most of the discussion, both on the right and the left, uh, we're kind of talking past each other. And I think that actually none of this is really truly about the 20 or so friends of Richard Spencer who ended up showing up to this rally uh, at all. Um, I, I, because what I have in my mind is our mutual friend, your colleague, Gavin McInnes, being permanently yeah. booted from Twitter right ahead of this event. Yeah. For now, sorry, go ahead. For completely specious reasons, too, for like for for, for violating for associating with groups that he's like disavowed and that he's repeatedly either dis disavowed or just outright called out or for other stuff, it's they wanted to scalp in an anticipation, and since they didn't jump on the Alex Jones train, they they jumped on this. But right, and there's so they they did associate. It's an absolute smear. They associated Gavin McInnes and the Proud Boys with this event. By the oh, way, what? you and I are fourth degree Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. uh, Gavin McInnes is also a knight, and uh, he's a Catholic. And I would say that as provocative as Gavin is, he's no more provocative than the average, say, stand-up comedian would have been ten years ago or less. No, that's that's completely fair. I mean, I mean, that's this is the stuff that you used to hear on Comedy Central primetime, and then that, that, that's pretty much the extent of it. He makes jokes about things, and people, you know, and they're funny, or they make you a little bit uncomfortable, but they're still kind of funny, and you laugh. Yeah, if you have a sense of humor, which. <clears throat> Clearly, the political left does not anymore. Right. And the political establishment. I mean, I made a whole video about the, uh, the banning of um, Alex Jones uh, from all of those ma massive companies. And I, I went through it with a fine-tooth comb afterwards and tried to eliminate all or at least most of my references to left versus right. Because in a way, it's almost more fundamentally about, I don't know, some sort of creepy establishment versus anything independent. Well, yeah, no, I, I think that, that that's the greater meta narrative to any discussion that we have about anything political these days. It's always the it's always the insurgents versus the establishment. And that's where we are. Yeah. That's why Trump. That's why like MAGA folks get along better with Bernie supporters than they do with you know like you know neocons in the Republican Party. That's right. just the reality. Yeah, yeah. So, and and what I think of like going back to the protests in, in D.C. Let's just first of all get it out of the way that almost no one showed up. Yeah, it's like you know, you're talking like two or three dozen people. Like this is a like this is the the KKK rally of the of the 21st century. Not just because of the the parallels and in the inherent ideology, though the parallels are there. It's because you have you have 20 to 30 you know racist losers show up to a thing, and you have scores and scores and scores more counter protesters than the actual people doing the thing. But of course, the media they 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 fall all over themselves. They write you know millions of words and hundreds of stories. I bet a thing that's ultimately going to be a fizzle of yeah. a bunch of basement dwelling weirdos walking around and then getting back on the subway and going home. You know, my goal, speaking of which, is I want to get those 20 or to 30 racists to come to our next, next March for Life so we can get some so coverage. So we can actually get some media coverage. Right. I was saying that on, online to some of my friends, and I said, what we can do is when they do show up, we can always just give them Sanger picket signs so that they can be in the counter-protest. They'll run in. Yeah, just like, yeah. So, like, yeah, show pictures of her with, like, the women of the KKK and everything else. They'll do just fine. They can get, you know, they get right along with all the uh, all the pro aborts who show up at, at the end. Yeah, it's, right. yeah, it's a match made in hell. Well, a match made in hell. But, 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 but again, <laughs> all this is about, in my view— is it's not even about Spencer. It's not even about the actual racists. From the mainstream media's perspective, it's about tarring other people with that feather. Right. And it's funny because I think they overplayed their hand. Even before the event happened, they were smearing Gavin McInnes and the Proud Boys and associating them with this event. Thereby, they already get a use out of the event, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then when the event happens, like you said, it really was a fizzle. And they're going to stop talking about it, I'd say, within five minutes. 
Oh, of course, yeah. You, you you always try to like slink off like a skull to dog whenever you've ever overplayed your hand like that. And, but I mean, here's the here's the frustrating thing, and I think Gavin was saying this on on Glenn Beck earlier today when he went on. Uh-huh. You know, he calls Antifa the alt left, and you know, I don't think he's wrong on that. But the thing is, like at their core base ideology, right? The alt right and the alt left are the same people. Hmm. Their entire worldview is based on race. They both hate Jews. They both hate Israel, and they both want a crap ton of government for their own like private little for their own like preferred classes. It's just they have different preferred classes, and that's that's the end of it right there. Right. And neither of their ideologies are sufficient to actually counter racism. And to be honest, like you're suggesting, the left itself doesn't actually have, it isn't actually incompatible with racism. They aren't in principle anti-racist, are they? No, 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 not in principle. It's because they have a worldview. Oh, it's because they intrinsically have a worldview that is itself based on race, that is itself based on all these different little people groups. Right? That's what makes them so similar here. They just see themselves. They, they they just see racism on different kind of tiers. They make judgments all the time about people based on the on the color of their skin. Regardless, you know, the, I mean, look at the shame that comes to black Republicans from the left. Mm-hmm. Right? They make all these sorts of judgments from front to back, and they want to section people off and place all these expectations on people based on these colors and based on these classes and based on like the perceived level of different kinds of oppression, regardless of what the actual narrative is. Yeah, and that's exactly what the idiot. All right, racists do well. They just they just shift the kaleidoscope of racism around for their own different kinds of for their own different political ideology purposes and desired outcomes. So, well, opposed to like conservatives, or you know those of us who have a natural law mentality, those you know classic liberals, conservatives, libertarians, whatever you want to call yourself in this big liberty loving soup that is a movement. Yeah, we we look at the human person. We look at the invulnerability of the human person as Catholics is made in the image of God, as talked about in the in the Catechism and the Magisterium of the Church, that's our starting point. And among there, yeah, people come in all different shapes and sizes and colors and flavors and everything else. It all comes down to the Imago Dei. Everyone having intrinsic human worth based on that intrinsic factor that none of us are in control of that is given to us as a free gift, a free amazing gift. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, that's fine. No, you're exactly right. And it's funny because actually that's also why we as Catholics and why non-Catholic uh, libertarians and so forth, their response— to Stalinists, right? Those are the moral equivalent of uh, Nazi sympathizers. Really, I mean, these people have tenure. They're not only evil, but they're powerful. They actually, I, I was saying this to a friend earlier today. One time in my life, I encountered an actual, real-life neo-Nazi. Yeah. And my reaction was to get him fired. Now, I'm pretty, I'm pretty far right. So I have, I would, I, my guess is that if that's how he fared with me, he's probably not going to get tenure at a university or have any other chance at getting any kind of influential position in the world because all of these influential positions are leftist-dominated, and, and presumably they would love nothing more than to get a Nazi fired. <laughs> but, yeah. but it's funny because while that's going on, meanwhile, conservatives are willing to have reasoned debates with, like I said, Stalin sympathizers. We are as repulsed by, le- by, by the mass murderous ideology of communism as we are by Nazism, and yet we have discussions. And that's not what's going on with the, with, the, with the left. Their proposal is the opposite. Gavin McInnes, I would imagine, might even say, hey, you know what? You shouldn't even be banning Nazis from Twitter. Let them have their, save their peace and be entirely put to shame. You shouldn't. Sunlight is always the disinfectant. All right, look. Ultimately, the marketplace of ideas is a marketplace, and if you have a crappy product, be it communism, racist nationalism, whatever the hell it is, if it's a crappy product, it should lose and it should fail on its own merits. The only thing you do when you force crappy products underground is you just force the infestation to fester and get worse. That's the thing. All right, so now, I'm mixing metaphors all over the place. No, but now that you say that, and, and in the spirit of Gavin McInnes, who is, among other things, a comedian— let me actually play. Uh, let me find this clip for you real quick. Rowan Atkinson, whom many of our viewers probably know as Mr. Bean, but also yeah. as Black Adder and so forth, he's been really a good advocate for free speech lately. Uh, right. Let me let me hand her off. Sure, sure. I'm going to roll a quick tape of him. The best way to increase society's resistance to insulting or offensive speech is to allow a lot more of it. As with childhood diseases. You can better resist those germs to which you have been exposed. We need to build our immunity to taking offence so that we can deal with the issues that perfectly justified criticism can raise. 
Our priority should be to deal with the message, not the messenger. As President Obama said in an address to the United Nations only a month or so ago, laudable efforts to restrict speech can become a tool to silence critics or oppress minorities. The strongest weapon against hateful speech is not repression, it is more speech. And that's the essence of my thesis, more speech. <clears throat> if we want a robust society, we need more robust dialogue, and that must include the right to insult or to offend. So what do you, what do you think of that? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's the, the, the way to make an, an infection worse. You know, the, the way to make something worse is to drive it away from sunlight and give it its own little, like, cool, dark space to fester, which is exactly what we've seen happen over the past couple of years with all these, like, basement-dwelling Internet trolls who are just rehashing old ideas that are, you know, from, like, pre-Hitler racism and on to, like, the Nazi right, right? That's, you know, that sort of, like, festering mentality is allow, what allows these guys to think they're bigger than they are and they're more influential than they are, and it's what leads... Idiots in the legacy media think that they're bigger and more influential than they are. Right. Ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, we, we need the freedom to be abrasive. We need the freedom to be brusque and blunt and direct about these ideas. And yes, all things, you know, all things in charity, all things in charity. Sometimes charity requires that we actually speak a little bit firmer. And you know what? We throw peanuts at the bad ideas because, you know what? They have bad consequences. Right. That's right. All right, well, where can folks find you in the future? By the way, speaking of which, you belong to a network of people who will not be uh, subjected to the kind of uh, pressure to ban people as Twitter well, of is. So, well, of course not, because we, we have our own platform. We built our own thing so that we're not subject to all the, the censorship of the Silicon Valley lefties and everything else, and that's why I love working for CRTV. Right. But you can find me on CRTV.com. You can find me at my Twitter, uh, and, uh, at Nate Madden CRTV. You can find me on Facebook and the, the Capitol Hill Brief page. And if you want to see more pictures of that darling little girl over there, you can uh, check me out on Instagram. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again for being with us, Nate, and uh, God bless you and yours. Bless you too, brother. Take care.